and you willfully chose to break the law. Believe it? We did not believe that there was any other way to do this. I would make this decision again, I'm afraid. It's about half the price of the previous model. OK, we'll get going. Uh, Mr Hebblethwaite, um, when I was reading your biography, it seemed pretty light uh, on your experience as a Chief Executive Officer. Are you in this mess because you don't know what you're doing, or are you just a shameless criminal? Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and answer questions. Um, and actually, before I answer that question, can I start, please, with an apology? Why person? didn't you talk to them in advance in a consultation, Mr Hebblethwaite? Why apologise after you've sacked them all? The context of this incredibly difficult decision is that P&O has lost an unsustainable amount of money. We would have had to close the business if we hadn't. I'm sorry to interrupt. I have lots of businesses come to my committee and tell me that, but they all consult before they make their staff redundant. Yeah. You didn't. Yeah, Why not? And we did consider every single option available to us, and we concluded that every single option available to us would result in the closure of P&O. In your letter to the Secretary of State, you said that you notified the relevant um, competent authorities in Cyprus, the Bahamas and Bermuda on the 17th of March. Is that correct? Yes. We heard earlier that that was in breach of your notification requirements to notify Cyprus within 45 days of the first dismissal and the Bahamas and Bermuda within 30 days. Do you recognise that? So not being a lawyer? Um, well, I presume you have access to lawyers, Mr. Of course. Hathaway. And, and, and we, we, we uh, are clear that we have not breached that law. Who did you write to in Cyprus? I will have to get back to you on Who that. Who did you write to in the Bahamas? I'll have to get back Who to you Who did you write to in Bermuda? Let me respond. Let did me you write. sign off these letters? No. Can you provide this committee with copies of them? Have you increased or decreased the value of P&O ferries by your actions? I think that P&O was otherwise going to close and didn't have a future. And so if your employers are, might I suggest, mad enough to offer you a performance-related bonus, will you accept it or reject it? That is, I can't tell you how far that is from my thoughts. point of principle. Will you accept it or reject it? I, I don't know the answer to that. If we manage to save the company... As a decision for you, if I'm offering you a performance-related bonus and you've just sacked 800 people, will you, as a point of principle, say, I'm not going to take that? I don't know the answer to that. I'm not, I'm not, I, to, I've got to be honest, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on saving the business and getting the 800 seafarers new jobs. Um, you recognise that uh, asking your employees to sign a settlement agreement means that they are withdrawing their rights for further legal action against P&O. Uh, Mr Christensen, on the screen please, from DP World, the owner of P&O Ferries, are you going to sack Mr Hebblethwaite for gross misconduct? I couldn't imagine that we would do that, no. Also, also as DP World, we acknowledge the pain that this has caused to a lot of people, mm -hmm. employees, Steve Ferris, their families, etc. So you're not hurt me saying that we do not acknowledge that thing. Well, I'm sure the families are grateful for your regrets after sacking them, Mr. Christensen. My last question for you is I understand that DP World owes £146 million to the Merchant Navy Ratings Pension Fund. When are you going to pay that? I don't know if the 146 is the right number. Uh, I have no, I no knowledge of that. I understand it is, and I also understand that you I'm not. £147 million pounds sponsoring a golf tournament, so it should be affordable for you, shouldn't it? May I add a point? Please. So the uh, liability for the pension fund, as I understand it, is a P&O liability, and we have um, an agreement, and we will honour those agreements to make those repayments. Thank you. And DP World will be giving you the money to do that, presumably, given you don't have any. Well, sadly, the reality is this was a very difficult step that we had to take to make the company viable and profitable, at which point we will all be able to honour our own commitments. Did p and have a duty to consult the unions in good time over the redundancies pursuant to Section 188 of the uh, Trade Union Act of 1992? So there's absolutely no doubt that we were required to consult with the unions. We chose not to do that because we believe... You chose to break the law? Because... We chose not to consult, and we will com and we are and will compensate everybody in full for that. I recognise that this is a really. When difficult you get in your car and drive down the motorway, and you see the 70 mile an hour sign. Do you decide that that's not going to apply to me? I'm going to do 90 uh, because I think it's important that I do that. Is that how you go about your life? No, no, it isn't.
And you haven't you haven't escaped the law of this country. You've still got to do it within the legal framework. You can't just decide that you're going to absent yourself from the legal system of the United Kingdom. So it, is, it, is, it was our assessment that the change was of such a magnitude that no union could possibly accept our proposal. Oh, you're and right about that, that, that Mr. 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 <laughs> I've never heard such farcical answers to a series of questions. Will you withdraw those NDAs and let people have the freedoms that we all enjoy? I assume you're talking to, about the confidentiality clause that's in the severance agreements? Tagging agreements, yes. It's a standard confidentiality clause, and actually it's there to, to protect both sides. What employment law provisions have you breached? So we have not consulted. And for that, we are fully compensating people for that in full up front. This entirely different model is about half the price of the previous model. About half the price? Yeah. The reaction to this has been extremely yes, strong. Sure. There's no question about that. And I, I, I do regret that. And I recognise it. I really, really do recognise it. But there was no P&O without the changes that we needed to make. What a mess. What a mess. So p and ferries have been operating since 1844, and then one Zoom meeting, you, you trash it all, trash it all. 800 people now on the dole, and um, you're now trying to clean this up, having ruined the reputation of p and ferries and undermined everything we're trying to do in the sector, even encouraging people to come forward and become seafarers. Did you change anything, knowing what you know now, what you did last Thursday? I would make this decision again, I'm afraid. Wow. Um, just one quick clarification before I go on to another member. Um, you said, Mr. Hepplethwaite, to Ms. Garney that you had a discussion with the Transport Secretary on the 22nd of November. Um, I didn't uh, have that. I, didn't, I wasn't part of that discussion, but I believe that, um, that a conversation was had in Dubai at Expo on the 22nd of November. With who? With... Secretary. Secretary. Who, was, who was the Secretary having a conversation with? If it wasn't you, who was it? Transport. Sorry, the so the transport secretary had a discussion with somebody in Dubai. Yes. Who? I, uh, some some senior execs at DP World. I don't know who who Thank I wasn't you. there. Mr. Christiansen, who had that conversation with the transport secretary in Dubai? I don't know either. I was also not participating in the. Presumably, in the you session. can find out for us and let us know. Yes, and I think uh, yeah. I think that Mr. Newlands asked us to do. You said in this session that what you've done to 800 working people, including people in my own constituency, was necessary to save P&O. Stinks. You might have avoided financial bankruptcy, but in the minds of many customers, you are morally bankrupt. Where is your office based? I have an office in Dover and I have an office in Hull. Could you just tell us why your ships are flagged in Cyprus, Bahamas and Barbados when they sail from the United Kingdom? So this predates me by some way, uh, but there was a change made, and I believe that the uh, move to Cyprus was um, to do with our maintaining our um, commitments to the French tonnage tax that we have. But do you mean to tell this committee that the chief executive of PNO has not signed off a safety risk assessment for massive change in, it, in your business, is, am, I, am I right in saying that? All of our team have been on this. I haven't seen the risk assessment. I will, I will get that would back you, to would you. you can I, I hope the MCA are listening to this because this is outrageous. I cannot believe that you can maintain your position, sir. I'm so sorry that you have signed off such enormous change and you have not directly seen the safety risk assessment. Mr Chairman, I'm going to hand back to you. Sorry, clarification on that. You have Dutch and, and French-based staff. Yes, very have not been treated in the same way. Correct. Mm. So. You said to this committee today that you willfully broke the law. You chose not to consult, even though you know you should have done. But you decided to pay people off with compensation in order to break the law. Does that not give you concern that you're in breach of your legal obligations as a company director under company law? So as I say, I completely hold our hands up, my hands up, our hands up, that we did choose not to consult. That's quite amazing, isn't it? You're coming to this parliament, putting your hands up and saying you willfully chose to break the law. We did not believe that there was any other way to do this, no way compensating to people in full. OK. Oh my God. Okay. I'm, sorry. I'm afraid we've run out of time, but Peter Hepplethwaite um, and uh, Justice Christensen, thank you for your time.